Hey guys, Juby Harlel here with Nine Leadership. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Today I want to do a follow-up video to one I did earlier with my friend Arslan Khan about Zoom and the security risks associated with it. They made some updates and I wanted to check in with Arslan to see what they'd done and see what the status of Zoom would be. So today we talk about that and get some more questions answered about it. So stay tuned, enjoy the conversation, and as usual, please like and subscribe if you want to get notified of additional videos as we post them, and leave a comment and let us know how you feel about the video. Do you like it? Do you not? What feedback do you have in general? Uh, do you want to see more topics? Let us know, we'll ha be happy to cover them. See you guys soon. Arslan, thanks a lot for joining me again today, man. We're doing a little follow-up to our last uh, conversation about Zoom. People really liked the conversation. They were interested in, in content. And so I figured we'd do a follow-up to talk about, you know, where things are at now compared to where they were before and what's changed. So, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad people found it helpful. Uh, uh, and I'm happy to do the follow-up. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Zoom uh, is still in the news. It's still uh, making waves. Uh, it's still uh, battling the security vulnerabilities that it had before. They're, uh, they're, have a lot of stuff in the roadmap. Uh, for example, the big thing was the encryption, that they had their own pro proprietary encryption, but now uh, the CEO has said that uh, they are implementing the, the standard, the AES-256 uh, encryption in the new release, which is uh, which will be on May 30th, or about by May 30th that they've said, and it will be on by default for all users. Uh, that that's one of the big big news. Uh, the other couple of news is that they have hired a couple of security firms to go and uh, uh, look at their platform and uh, try to guide them to uh, secure all their attack surfaces uh, as much as possible. So it could be so it could become a more of a, uh, a enterprise solution for people to use that were using before. Cool. So you mentioned a couple of things that I, I want to clarify for folks who may not know what they are. So. Uh, you mentioned the AES-256 um, encryption, and they also mentioned the tax services. Can you talk about a little more about what those, what each one of those are and what they mean? Sure. Uh, I mean, AES stands for Advanced <clears throat> Encryption Standard, uh, and it's uh, 256 just means 256, it's 256-bit long, and bit is a, a binary digit like ones and zeros. So one one of those is a bit, so it's, it's a combination of 256 of those that's mm -hmm. how long the encryption is. And of course, the longer it is, the longer it takes time to break it. Uh, uh, so I mean, but uh, AES was adopted by US uh, government. Uh, I don't know exactly one, but it has become the standard to most mm -hmm. modern technologies uh, 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 and to most modern applications as well. So it's a very recognized uh, industry standard, uh, which gotcha. most people uh, uh, trust. And that, that's what AES uh, encryption means. Uh, as okay. far as attack surface, hackers try to attack the attack surface. Attack surface means basically if you think of it as a house, uh, and if your house has a door, your door is the attack surface. So like everybody's mm -hmm. going to try to attack that surface to get in because that's the entry point. Uh, and of course, so is Windows as well if you had Windows. Uh, once you put a lock on your door, now the attack surface shrinks to that lock because you need to attack that lock to break into it. So hence, like you need to, uh, the good practice is to shrink all your attack surfaces. So it, it, it's very focused and then you can concentrate uh, all your energy into those one spots that are vulnerable and try to keep patching them. And that's what I'm talking like, attack surfaces. Kind of like the two meter wide hole in the Death Star, you know. Like you wanna... Very good, that's exactly, that That was an attack surface and that's that's exactly what they did. You're right, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, you, know, you don't want to necessarily put all your vulnerabilities at one part, you know, but. Yeah. You know, that, that, no, I mean that, that's the idea is to shrink uh, every like uh, uh, as long as long as your vulnerable spot are tiny, it it take it's much harder uh, to attack those surfaces. Obviously, right, right, cool, okay, all right, good. So that so so then in terms of what they what they've done so far, they have some things in the works. Obviously, they're still building, you know, working on improving the system a little more uh, or a lot more, in the case may be. Um, yeah, they, but, they need they have a long road ahead, but I think they they at least have a roadmap. Yeah, so that, that, I mean that's that's definitely a good sign. So as far as far as people, folks who are using it right now, um, would you recommend that they continue using it for 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 what purposes would would they be you know could they keep using it for, um, and uh, if they're using it for things like like work right or if it's like and 
discussions for clients if they have med- if they're medical personnel if they've seen patients that kind of thing what kind of what kind of considerations should they be having as they as they go through and use this platform sure i mean uh, uh I, i'll tell you this that at least a company i work for and the us government has uh uh, put a blanket statement that we can't use Zoom right now uh, be- because of the privacy issues, obviously. Uh, uh, I personally am not using Zoom for work stuff. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't recommend anyone to be using it for any, any sensitive or PII information uh, exposure. PII meaning you know, the personal identifiable information. Uh, anything that you deem that is sensitive that you don't want the world to know, I would not be using Zoom to communicate that those information. Uh, uh, but for, you know, like work, happy hours, gathering that has become very popular. Absolutely. No problem with that. Uh, getting in contact with a bunch of friends to just to chit chat and, uh, you know, uh, be feel connected in this social distance environment. Absolutely not a problem. I, I don't, but even in those, like I would say, keep your security in mind, right? Like, uh, exercise the tools that zoom has now provided. For example, uh, I would encourage all meeting hosts to, uh, to use, uh, require passwords for all all people joining, right? So you can eliminate that Zoom bombing, or at least reduce the Zoom bombing. Uh, in fact, and if people who don't know about Zoom bombing, it's you know where people are just randomly joining sessions and either saying obscene things or uh, displaying uh, not safe for work pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. the passwords passwords have uh, reduced that uh, if you are exercising that. Another thing they have done is also that they have implemented. Uh, password com- complex password policies, which means you know, uh, minimum eight characters long has to have a number and a special character, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, they have enforced uh, pa- passwords on Zoom recording on the cloud as well. So that's another thing that they've enabled it. Uh, and, and one thing I also noticed is that for paid users, they can actually choose which region of the world to use as their uh, to funnel their sessions from because mm. in the past uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, sessions that were going through China which was a huge concern as well so th- those are the few few things that they have done gotcha okay I mean that's good to know so I mean for folks who do choose to use zoom that those are still some considerations that they could put into place as far as other platforms I mean zoom is one platform you mentioned you know that 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 exists right now, but there's other other things like Google Meet now that just came out. Uh, you got Skype, you know, you have WebEx, um, there are a couple other ones as well. It's, as far as how Zoom, you know, matches up with with those. As far as folks who are looking for alternative, um, what are some alternatives that you that you've used in the past? Or that, and there's also Microsoft Teams as well. Um, what are some t- some things that you use uh, that, that your company uses that, that folks might be able to implement themselves? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're we're using WebEx currently, uh, and you just you mentioned pretty much all the big names, you know, WebEx, Google Meets, uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, there's uh, Avaya is also has its own platform. I'm not a huge fan of that, but they do. Uh, there's even something called freeconference.com as well, which uh, provides a free tier uh, as well. Again, I, I, I haven't actually dived into that and how secure it is, but I mean, there's a lot of, uh, and there's a lot of platforms out there. And of course, within the big names like WebEx, Teams, and uh, uh, your Google Meet, they're, they're, they have expanded their free tiers capacity as well for people to be able to use in this because in the pandemic situation we are. For example, WebEx free tier, you can have up to 100 guests in the session and you can pretty much do a lot of things that paid subscribers can do as well. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, Microsoft team has a free tier as well, which is, uh, which is also, I think, uh, they have significant amount of hosts as well. So you can easily use Teams and I understand that they want they're they're doing a good job getting people on board and giving people choices to hey try out all these free tiers see which one you like and of course uh, you know it's a good good uh, capitalistic I would say market for you for our conference platforms right now but uh, uh, Zoom took off when its notoriety uh, uh, because of how ease of use it was to set up and everything and I guess, I guess that's one thing that attracts a lot of the uh, the millennials is how intuitive it is to use. Uh, and after they have uh, patched up all these security holes and have come to a, a standard meet that everybody feels all warm and fuzzy that they are secure, I think you'll see a lot of people move back to Zoom. Uh, at least that's my prediction. Of course, I could be wrong, but you know, 
uh, unless people have made significant investment in other platforms already. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, and and checking out, making sure that the, um, making sure that they're secure before you move back to them, and and also for the, depending on depending on the purpose you're using Zoom for as well. Like you mentioned, you know that 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 could be so that's something to consider at least to make sure that you're not you know, talking about proprietary information or whatnot, things that you want to keep under wraps over <laughs> over a not secure platform. Um, but I think happy hours, you know, things like that. Like if you, if you want, need a quick solution for that kind of thing, Zoom sounds like it's still a good option. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, we're using Zoom right now, obviously. Right. I mean, uh, right. yeah, I mean, we're, we're not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sponsoring anything. I'm assuming neither are you, but we're just talking about uh, vulnerabilities <laughs> of Zoom just because it, A, it was on the news. Uh, and, and I mean, I'll, I'll like to say like, I mean, uh, you know, all software has their vulnerabilities, obviously. That's, that's one of the reasons cybersecurity market is such a huge thing is there will always be vulnerabilities and there will always be those people who exploit those vulnerabilities and then there will be people who are willing to patch those and remediate and fight against those vulnerabilities you know so i mean that's just the name of the game and uh, the problem with zoom was it made claims that it couldn't back up and that's why it's on the news and it got so big so fast too right i mean like it went from being a you know relatively medium you know level platform to when this pandemic happened, it, it just skyrocketed in terms of use, in terms of people downloading and being like, okay, let's get on Zoom and talk about this. And, you know, it just became so big so fast. And then it, so that put a big target on its back, right? Because folks are in the hacking community or, or in, and just in the cybersecurity community who know what they're doing and may have, you know, not so nice <laughs> ideas in their heads. were like, oh, it's a great target. You know, they're not really that secure. We can jump on and do whatever the heck we want. You know, so I mean, I, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Like, uh, I've, uh, Every attacker will attack where where the, uh, the more majority of success is. Like for example, a lot of people say, "Hey, uh, Apple doesn't get hacked." It's not the fact that Apple doesn't get hacked; is because the amount of users, uh, Apple users, are much more uh, limited versus the Microsoft users of the world. Right? I mean, it's, even in today's world, Microsoft dominates like ninety percent of the market, while App, Apple has their, of course, loyalty. You know, their ten percent of them. And, and I would say it's even still growing, but why focus my efforts uh, to yield just for 10% result when I have a much greater population that would yield results a lot, a lot faster and, and, uh, and significant numbers, right? So that's, that's why, and just like you said, exactly, there was a huge population of people using Zoom. So, uh, and the fact that it's not as secure, that's, you know, hackers buffet right there. I was like, hey, let me go crack at it. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of um, advice you might have for folks out there who are using Zoom right now, so you mentioned that if, if they can switch to another platform for their, for their sensitive conversations to do that, um, and then if they want to continue using Zoom, just use the, use essentially common sense, right? I mean, use the- Absolutely. Use the I mean, yeah. I would just say use, use the sense of like, hey, if you, if you wouldn't like telling uh, the information that you're using on Zoom on YouTube for everyone to see, probably don't use Zoom, right? Uh, and, and just like just like we mentioned on the call, like the, there are a plethora of platforms out there that do meet uh, security standards. Try them out. They're they're not uh, they're just as good as uh, or they're just as intuitive as Zoom. Once you you know once you get a hang of it. Uh, but other thing I would t uh, like to say about Zoom is I would recommend using the web link versus having the software download on your uh, computer. A, the web links, uh, the web version gets security patches much faster. And plus, uh, anything, you know, on your, br your, your browser automatically either pops a window or at least there is some kind of a user interaction if it's going to automatically download something. But if you already have the application downloaded, then it, uh, uh, you're, you're, more, you're opening up yourself to more vulnerability just because there are a lot of malwares that are being uh, written out there for specifically for those desktop app for the Zoom desktop application. Good to know. That's, that's, I mean, I use the desktop app myself, yeah. so I might need to switch that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just. I mean, if possible, use it. Of course, like you know, uh, certain features probably are not available in the web version that are in desktop. So, you know, it, it's 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 your balancing your risks, right? That's yeah. as long as you balance your risks. Well, the last thing I do want to say is uh, you are wearing a nice shirt. I, 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 we're not in conflict today, but I, I like I like that shirt. It's pretty cool. Oh, so. thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a nerd, if you haven't already guessed. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think we're both we're both more than a little bit of a nerd. I, 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 that's that's where I was <laughs> leading to. Like we're not alone. Or uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a great shirt. It's a, it's a go go throwback to the old school Dragon Ball Z. 
you know. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, since uh, since we've had so much this uh, stay at home orders. I'm sli- I'm starting to slowly even uh, get my wife into a lot of anime these days. So and it's nice. working. It's working. She's finished one of them, which is just a long one, which is fairy tale. If you did, if you've seen it. I, I so it's on my list that one and since we have so much time one piece I'm gonna start it just because oh like no I would say start episode. yeah yeah start fairy tale before one piece because one piece fillers are long and oh you mean kind of Dragon Ball Z with with the with the, the dragon bridge <laughs> like forty uh, episodes arc with- basic yeah basically <laughs> basically basically thanks so much for talking today man and coming back and letting us know what's going on with Zoom and uh, for anyone out there please ha- if you have questions please feel free to reach out to Arcelon I'll put his contact information in the description below. Um, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out. If you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe, uh, hit the bell to get notified of future videos, and leave a comment if you have questions or comments or ideas for future videos. So thanks a lot, guys, and take care. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Looking forward to the next one. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Arslan.